Hi guys, Amisha Grasty here with some exclusive Team Hydra Squad content for you. Um, today in this video, I'm going to show you really quickly how to work with uh, Hydra and SKU Grid if you're wanting to use dollar amounts for your profit margins versus using percentages. I know a lot of you are used to using dollar amounts. You might say to yourself, okay, this is a hundred dollar item. I want to make ten dollars on this item, um, etc. Um, as opposed to working with a profit margin percentage. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, if you know in your mind that you want to work with a dollar amount for a profit margin, all you have to do is, um, if you want those to be your settings overall in Hydra, uh, you would be in Hydra. You're looking at the final price formula area here. And you will go ahead and enter in the amount that you want to use to account for any vendor tax if you want to. It's totally optional. Um, for your margin, you can either leave this blank at zero, um, blank or type zero, or um, I know some of us, uh, Maurice and myself, we like to put an extra 1% here for cushion. And for fixed margin, this is where you're going to put your dollar amount that you want for profits. So on a large scale, when I list my items, what this formula will do is I will be getting a $3 profit margin on these items plus an additional 1%. You know, that's just a little extra cushion for me. Uh, if you don't want that extra cushion, again, leave that blank or change it to one. But uh, on a large scale, if I were to do this in my Hydra settings, this would be uh, the fixed margin is the dollar amount profit that I want for every single item that I list. Um, personally, I don't like to work with dollar amounts. Uh, initially, when I list the items, I work with percentages. Um, so, for example, if an item is uh, $100 and I say I want a 10% profit margin, then I can expect $10 for that particular item. Um, and also, likewise, if the item is $300, that 10% will scale up with the cost of the item. So 10% uh, of the $300 item, I would be looking at a $30 profit. Okay, so initially when I list, I list my strategy is I list with percentages at first. And then as I feel the need to revise my items or tweak my pricing, I go into SKU Grid and I edit individual items and I work with dollar amounts at that point um, because it's easier for me in my head. But, you know, you do whatever you feel comfortable doing. So, again, uh, you enter your vendor tax amount, uh, margin either zero or one. Fixed margin, this is the dollar amount that you want to get. Uh, and your minimum margin, make, go ahead and make your minimum margin equal to the fixed margin here. Okay, minimum margin comes into play when you have a cheap item so again with the uh the 10 let's just say we were doing percentages uh if it was a 10 dollar item as opposed to a 100 dollar item and i had a 10 dollar i'm sorry a 10 percent profit margin i would be expecting a one dollar profit well the minimum margin kicks in and it says well no we're going to increase the price so that you walk away with at least three dollars on this item regardless of how cheap the item is so that's where your minimum margin comes into play when i'm working with dollar amounts i put the fixed margin and i make the minimum margin equal to that um, your paypal fees are 2.9 uh, percent and then there's also a 30 cent transaction fee for paypal ebay fees are always going to be nine or ten um, and that's how you construct your formula if you want to work with dollar amounts. You can test this by hitting test formula. Okay, you can enter a starting price for an item. So let's say the item was $100 and I want a $3 profit. But with all of these things considered, vendor tax uh, and my eBay and PayPal fees, it's going to take all of that into consideration. I don't have to do the math. It's going to take all of that into consideration to make sure that I still walk away with at least $3 on this item. So a $100 item, if I click OK, that would be priced at about $127.56 um, to give me the $3 that I wanted. Okay, so and again, um, if, you're, if you're making your main settings this way, you, you do want to go ahead and uh, 
make sure that your SKU grid settings are the same as a default. Uh, and that way, when you list items, they don't all come over with an override formula. Um, what else? Okay. Um, but when I list, like I said, I like to work with profit margins as a percentage. So um, my, you know, SKU grid and Hydra are usually the same. So it might look something like this. Um, vendor tax is eight, and then the my profit margin might be ten. My fixed margin would be blank, and my minimum margin would be three. Everything else would be the same, you know. So, and these these numbers are just I'm just playing around with these numbers. These are not necessarily what I work with. Um, you know, you do what what you're comfortable with. I'm just showing you how to uh, make the changes. So, um, with that being said, in this scenario, this is how people are normally used to looking at it in Hydra and SKU grid, but as you can see, when you go to working with dollar amounts, you're just flipping these two things. You're, you're taking away the margin percentage and saying, okay, I don't want to work with a margin percentage. So you'll either take that out or put one to give yourself a little bit more cushion, and instead you'll go with a dollar amount here in the fixed margin, and that becomes your profit. Um, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, Next, I'll show you, if you already have items up, let's just say I have an item up and uh, on this particular item, I'll work with this one, on this particular item, I want, instead of the uh, profit margin percentage I had when I listed the item, now I see that I'm getting some watchers on this item and I want to revise my pricing, drop it down a little bit, but now in my mind, I want to work with a dollar amount, okay? So all I would do is I would come in a SKU grid, I would hit edit, you scroll down to the bottom where it says override default selling formula. By clicking this button, it, it uh, forces SKU grid to no longer consider the formula that you have in your, your settings here. And you're basically going to be using this button over here to create a new formula for this one particular item. So I hit override selling formula, use wizard, okay? And at that point, I would go ahead and redo all of my numbers, but I'm going to do them in dollar, you know, to where it's a dollar amount profit. So, uh, you know, I would go ahead and enter whatever I want for vendor tax. I'm not going to put any in here on this particular item because this supplier rarely charges tax. Um, the margin percentage, either zero or one at this point. And your fixed margin, this is how much money I want to make on this item. Since I'm not using, or I'm using very little margin percentage, I want my fixed margin to become my profit. And this is in dollar amounts. So let's just say on this item, I want to make uh, $12. Okay. Um, so I would type 12 here. And my minimum margin, let's just say I wanted to, uh, you keep that the same as your fixed margin. You do your PayPal fees, okay, and nine uh, for eBay fees if you have a store, ten if you don't have a store. Include suppliers calculation or shipping and calculations. Yes. Um, now I can estimate the final price. I don't remember how much this was. It might have been sixty nine dollars, but you know you can just type this in and enter, and it shows you what it would price this item to based on this new formula. Okay, so um, with that being said, all I do, I don't stop there. So in my mind, I say, okay, I wanted a $12 profit margin. What I would do is I would come up here to this, uh, your reference ID area, and I would write, you know, I put a dash here and put 12. Okay, so in my mind, as I'm looking at my item in the grid, and if I ever need to come back and tweak things further on this item, I can look at a glance and see what my last... Uh, estimated profit margin was for this item and I can go from there so the next time I come in and revise I might come in and I would you know override and change the 12 to a 10 to drop it down another two dollars okay like that's how I operate and I, I think it's a little easier for me to identify here by having the the last profit margin that I wanted right here in the reference ID um, and then all you do is hit edit item. I mean, I'm sorry, update item. And then that's it. So um, in the grid, you'll see that it has $12 here. 
my pricing will be changing eventually. Um, you know, once you update an item, it goes into a queue to be repriced. So at that point, SKUgrid is going to reprice it so that I get a $12 profit on this item. And I hope that helps you guys. Okay, the other scenario that I wanted to mention is if you wanted to actually list an item uh, at the time of listing, you know in your mind that you want to list it with a dollar amount profit. Um, or if you have a batch and you want a whole batch to go in with a specific dollar amount profit, you would do the same thing. So if it's a batch, um, you would just go ahead and enter in the ASINs or product URLs, select your marketplace from the list, and hit add custom formula and from here you would do the same thing you would add in your vendor tax your margin percentage which would be zero or one Sorry. okay um, whatever profit you wanted uh, at a minimum in dollar amounts you would go ahead and enter that and then your PayPal fees and your eBay fees and then you would submit the batch okay so at this point Every item that is in this batch comes through with an override formula to SKUgrid, um, and SKUgrid will keep it at this particular formula to always give you a $5 profit or whatever um, amount you wanted. It will be a little bit more because you'll get an extra 1% if you're including the one here. Um, so that's how you do it with a batch. I'm going to show you really quick what I would do on a single item listing. Um, so I'm just going to grab an item to list. This looks pretty cool. I'm going to grab the product URL, paste it in, and hit add new item. Okay, so um, once that is up, all I do is come in I leave everything else the same. I might edit my title. Oh, there's variations on this one. So you select your variation. I don't know which images are showing. Okay, so I would select a variation. I would make sure my pictures and stuff match the variation. Like this one is, um, this, this listing has pictures of all of them. So I would make sure to go and change all that. It's a bad example, <laughs> but the point is, is I would do a single item listing and I would come in and where it's showing you the price. This is based on your original pricing formula that's in your settings. Um, instead of uh, using that, you would say, OK, well, no, when I list this particular item, I just know flat out I want to get, uh, you know, a ten dollar profit on it. OK, so you would come in and you would enter your vendor tax, your margin percentage as either zero or one. And then you would enter your fixed margin, which is the profit you want to make in dollars. Your minimum margin is the same. Your PayPal, your eBay fees. Okay, and then that's it. Um, I forget how much this item is with the supplier. I have to look. Uh, it's $99.99. So pretty much, oops, I just got rid of everything. Okay, Eight, uh, 1, 10, 10. No. Okay, so at that point you can see how the price changed. Okay, uh, originally based on my my other formula settings I had, it was going to give me a higher uh, selling price. But now working with a ten dollar profit margin, um, I know that this item is going to be listed. It's going to give me minimum, you know, ten dollar profit. And uh, there's my new selling price. It's automatically calculated for you. You don't have to do the math. So. That uh, really is about it. No math. We don't have to do math here. All right. Thanks, guys. Let me know if you have any questions.